In this video, we're gonna be defining a batonic sequence, and then we're gonna be solving a problem based around the sequence in Python. So let's go ahead and first define what a batonic sequence is. So a batonic sequence is a sequence of integers such that they, they satisfy the following property here. So we have some integer x1, and then from x1, in an increasing manner, we go all the way up until xk. So x sub k is the highest element, or the peak element, we'll call. And then from x sub k, it goes down in a decreasing manner, all the way down to x sub n minus 1, for some k0 less than or equal to k less than n. So that's a fairly abstract definition. Let's go ahead and give a more concrete example of a batonic sequence. It's given by these numbers right here. So we can see that we start off with this number one. We go up in an increasing fashion all the way up till five. Five is our peak element in this example, and then from five, we go down back to one. So this is an example of a batonic sequence, and the goal of this video is to write a program to find the peak element in such a batonic sequence. So we want to get this element here in this example. So let's take a look at a few more examples of batonic sequences just to make sure we have the concept down, and then we'll take a look at how we can actually solve this problem. So this is the example we just took a look at, so I'll go ahead and skip that one. So this list right here is also a batonic sequence. So we start off at one, we go up all the way to four, and then from four we go down. So note that this batonic sequence here was particularly symmetric in that we had the same number of numbers from the left side and the right side, and they were also the same numbers on the left and right. Here we have a different number of numbers on the left, although they are increasing. This is the peak element, and then all the numbers to the right of the peak are decreasing. In this case, it's just one number. And what we would expect from this uh, list here, we would expect an output of four, since four is the peak element in this example. Likewise, we have another batonic sequence here, and the peak element in this case is six. So we start off at one, and it increases to six, and then from six, it goes all the way down to one. So from the peak element here, it goes down. So here we have kind of a skewed example. There's only one element to the left, and the rest of these elements here are decreasing. So we can think about a naive way to solve this problem. How do we find the peak element given any batonic sequence? Well, one thing we can do is we can check the elements to the left and to the right of a given element to see if they satisfy the peak requirement, namely the fact that the element to the left is less than the element we're on, and also the element to the right is less than the element that we're on. So there's no element to the left of one. Let's say we start off here in the beginning of the array and we go sequentially. There's no element to the left, so we're just gonna skip that one and go over here to two. We check if the element to the left is less than two, indeed it is, and we check whether or not the element to the right of two is less than two, it's not, it's three. So two cannot be a peak element. And so we just continue on in this fashion, just checking the elements one by one until we arrive at five, where both the element to the left of five, which is four, and the element to the right of five, which is four, these are both less than five, so therefore five satisfies the requirement of being a peak element. So this approach is going to give us kind of a linear runtime complexity, and we can think of a particularly bad example Namely, we can think of an array that might be given to us like this, where we'll have, let's say, the numbers that looks kind of like a lot of numbers on the left-hand side, and then just nothing really on the right-hand side. So in order to determine whether or not this particular sequence is batonic based on the approach that we just went over, we would have to go through you know, an arbitrarily long list of integers all the way up until we reach this energy here to determine that once we've reached this one, we check to the right and to the left that this number is the highest therefore it's the peak. This is going to be the worst case analysis, and we're going to assume that this algorithm that we just described is going to give us big O of n, where n is the size of the array. So we want to see if we can do any better than that, and indeed, we can do better, and we can apply the binary search algorithm idea. You could probably tell that we're going to do that based on the fact this video is in the binary search playlist, but we're going to apply that idea and see if we can improve the runtime from linear to something less. So let's just think about how binary search works, and then going through some examples, we'll see how we can tweak the idea in such a way to solve this problem, and then hopefully the code will be pretty clear enough to write once we've established how we can make use of binary search. So let's take a look at this list here. So remember, in binary search, we have 
the elements that are kind of defining the bounds of the array. So we have a low point, which is the first element of the array, a high point, which is the last element of the array, and then the midpoint, which is the middle point of the array. So in this particular example, the middle point of this array is this element three. So what we can do is we can check if this element here satisfies the peak property. That is, does the element to the left of three and the element to the right of three, are they both less than three? Well, two is less than three, but four is not. So three, in this case, is not a peak element. But we know that since the batonic sequence has this property that it increases, we know that the element that we're looking for, the peak element, must be where it's increasing. So it must be to the right. So we know that since this element here on the left side was less than the element, the midpoint in this case, the element here was greater, so we know that we need to trend towards that direction. We need to move our search space to the right side. So let's take a look at kind of a, another example, which is kind of the opposite. So in this list here, our midpoint is given to us by four. Again, we check the right of four, which is three. We check the left of four, which is five. Five is greater than four, but three is not. So it doesn't satisfy the property of it being a midpoint, but we know that the the peak element, or sorry, it doesn't satisfy the property of being a peak element. We know that the peak element must exist in the left portion, again, because the element here to the left of four was greater, so we know that the peak element resides somewhere in the left portion of that search space. So what we're gonna do is kind of use a binary search idea to eliminate half of the search space as we go along and in doing so, we, we should arrive at our peak element in log n time as opposed to just linear time. So that's quite an improvement over the naive algorithm that we went over in the beginning part of this video. So that's kind of the general gist of the idea, and it's really just kind of a tweaked version of binary search. So let's just go ahead, assuming that you've seen the binary search video in this playlist, I'll just kind of go ahead and start to code this up, and we'll step through it as we, as we go along. So let's go ahead and start off by defining low, which is equal to the index of the first element in the array, and then high, which is equal to the length of a minus one. So it's the last element minus one, so we don't read out of bounds of the array. And then one thing that we want to do, I didn't mention this before, is that we want to have some type of, uh, I guess you could say, bounds checking. Namely, we want to make sure that the sequence that we're given is a sequence that could be appropriately defined as a batonic sequence. So if you give me an element if you give me a list that has no elements, one element, or two element, then we can't say that that list is a batonic sequence because if we only have a list of two elements, then it can't satisfy this property up here. An element or a sequence of elements with three elements can. So if we have one, two, and three, that could be defined as a batonic sequence or it has the potential to be defined as a batonic sequence. But we need at least three elements for it to be possibly defined as a batonic sequence. So one thing that we're gonna do before we move on to actually coding up the algorithm is do this check to make sure that we're actually dealing with a uh, proper list. So we're gonna require at least three elements for a batonic, let's say for a valid batonic sequence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the length of A is less than three, we're just gonna return none because that's not a valid batonic sequence. Okay, so assuming that it is, we're going to go through kind of our vanilla uh, binary search method. So we're gonna say while low is less than or equal to high, we're gonna define our midpoint. So our midpoint is going to be just low plus high divided by two. That's gonna give us the midpoint of the list that we're given as input. And then what we wanna do as we've kind of stepped through this example is if we have a midpoint here, let's say for the sake of example, we wanna check the element to the right and the element to the left. So we wanna check this element, we wanna check this element. So let's go ahead and just acquire those elements first. So I'll call both of those elements mid left and then mid right. So mid left is gonna be equal to a of mid minus one, and then mid right is gonna be equal to a of mid plus one. But we wanna make sure also that we're not reading beyond the bounds of the array. So we don't want to read anything before the zeroth element for mid left, we don't want to read anything beyond the last element of the array for mid right, so we don't want to read outside of the bounds of the array. So we'll set those equal to the elements here if, in this case, mid minus one is greater than zero. Again, we, we don't want to read before the zeroth index. And then also here, we'll do that as long as mid plus one is less than the length of A. 
And then what we'll do in the event that those elements are not valid in, in the sense that there's nothing there, we'll just go ahead and fill in that with float of infinity or minus infinity. And then in this case, we'll do float of float of infinity. So I'm just giving a very small value here for mid left and a very big value there for mid right. So now what we want to do is once we've got our mid left and mid right, we want to do some checks. So we kind of have our two instances here. Basically, let's take a look at this example again. And if we check the element to the left of our midpoint, that's two. And if we check the element to the right of our midpoint, that's four. We have an element that's greater than the midpoint on the right side and an element that's lesser on the left. So we want to shift our search space to the right. So we want to essentially eliminate half of the search space on the left and move everything up to the right. Similarly, in this case, if we found our midpoint here to be four, then we know that the element to the left is greater and the element on the right is lesser. We want to shift our search space to the left because we know that the peak element must reside in the left portion of the array. So we're going to check those requirements. So we want to check if mid left is less than the midpoint and mid right is greater than the midpoint. Then what we want to do is we want to shift our search space, specifically we want to shift our low point equal to mid plus one. So what are we doing there? So that's exactly this case here. So in this case, we have our midpoint and mid left that's less than the midpoint, that's two, and mid right is greater. So we want to shift our low point to go up, so that way we only consider the right portion of the array. So this is, it's exactly what we're doing with this if statement here. So in a similar fashion, we want to do the other case. So else if mid left is greater than a of mid, and mid right is less than a of mid, then what we want to do in this case so let's just go up over here because this example is that case. So the element on the left is greater, element on the right is lesser. We know that the peak element must exist somewhere over on the left. So we want to redefine our high point from here, where it was previously, to over here. So we want to go ahead and define our high point equal to mid minus one. And then otherwise, else if mid left is less than a of mid and mid right is less than a of mid. So in this case, this is an example where we actually found the midpoint. So if we have this as our midpoint here, element to the left is lesser than this midpoint, element to the right is lesser than this midpoint, we found our peak. And in that case, all we're gonna wanna do is return a of mid because that is our peak element. So let's go ahead and just make sure that this works. I'm gonna take these examples down to the bottom and then go ahead and run this just to make sure that we're getting the examples or the output that we expect from this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x is equal to find highest number a and I'm just going to go ahead and comment out some of these lists so that we, we know which one we're actually running and then I'm going to say print x which is going to be the return value of this uh, of this function here. So let's assume that we're given this list as input and we know that the peak element in this case is 5. So we'll write that, we'll clear the terminal, and then we'll say Python find highest number. And then in that case, we do get five. So that's exactly what we expected, that's great. So I'm gonna comment that out, kind of move sequentially on down. Let's check this example now. So we expect that the peak element in this example should give us four. We'll do the same thing. We get four there, which is what we expect. I'll comment this out, uncomment this one write it and see what we get. We get six, that's exactly what we expect for this example here. So that pretty much does it for this video. As always, the code is going to be available on my GitHub and I'll provide a link to that in the description of this video. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below of this video. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.